To celebrate Auckland's centenary, the City Council and various civic-minded sponsors invited some overseas sculptors to come and work in the city. Fred Loopstra from Springfield, Ohio, the United States. Tom Burrows from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Helen Escobedo from Mexico City, Mexico. Hiroaki Ueda from Kyoto, Japan. First of all, the four sculptors examined their sites. <laughs> Professor Ueda says that of course there is interaction between the site itself and his idea of a suitable sculpture for it. Fred Loopstra. We were selected sites based on the pattern of our previous work, and uh, we were sent overhead aerial photographs and uh, ground photographs and uh, a surveying map to give us some idea of size. Tom Burrows. I think it was a beautifully chosen site. I didn't choose the site, I was given the site. And possibly I could like to put a piece of sculpture in front of that building, but it wouldn't be to make the people's life more pleasant, it would be to make the people tear down the building. Helen Escobedo. I was given a site which I didn't know. I studied the photographs. I realized that it was such a beautiful site. There was no point in interfering with it. I had to rather enhance it. In other words, one had to see through this thing. So far, I think um, I've been delighted when I've talked about the idea that people like it. The granite for Hiroaki Ueda's sculpture was imported from Africa. At a local stonemason's, it was cut into pieces suitable for shaping. We're working in material which is classified as refuse or, or scrap. Things are not necessarily created for what I'm doing, but things that are being thrown away. Again, I'm, I'm trying to not present any type of form. But somehow I try to select forms that uh, don't relate to any uh, to any function or, or uh, symbol so much. The sculptors had only one month in which to complete their work. Many local firms, organizations, and industries provided materials and their services free. Assistance was provided also by staff and students of Elam School of Fine Arts of the University of Auckland. Fred Loopster selected railway sleepers for his raw material. I wish to show the strength, the nobility inherent in the stone. Helen Escobedo worked with beams and tubes formed of aluminium, these components being extruded under her direction. Professor Ueda is not only a keeper of tradition, but in expressing himself as an individual, he develops that tradition as well. I think any, any, any human marker is, a, is an indication of, of human psyche, be it a tire mark or, or a building or graffiti or, or a film. I've been in the landscape work for about nine years, and in the last three years, I've gotten into uh, looking for form from form, turn of the century agricultural equipment that has uh, since been abandoned on the hillside. I'm interested in not in putting up a sort of monument to somebody, but to making the city more beautiful. And I'm not really afraid of using the word function in sculpture. I believe sculpture should be functional. 
if ideal expression can be located, there won't be any more reason to go on doing it. Then it's no longer expression. It, it's so total it can't be abstracted. I am not applying shape to the stone. I am releasing the shape within the stone. I am helping the stone to open. I'm trying to disassociate from a stylistic form, which is a very hard thing to do because all of a person's thought processes are, are usually delineated into stylistic forms. As the various components of Tom Burrow's work were finished, they were grit blasted to remove rust, old paint, oil and dirt. And then they were galvanized. When I came to New Zealand, looked at your very clear sky and decided to change the color scheme. The hot colors weren't needed here. Any colors would vibrate. And I went into the blues and yellows more. I can create these large negative spaces within my solid volumes, solid areas that the people can get into, become physically involved without actually touching the sculpture itself, but just by, you know, becoming in the negative space. So, so you try to, to somehow create forms that, that that don't exist already. And maybe by looking at those forms, you, you can begin to in, invest, if, if it's necessary to in, invest yourself in an objectified form, you, you, you begin to uh, invest yourself in structures that, that, that are, are a bit more, a bit more free. Of course, new materials will come, but they will never replace stone. Stone is basic. It is the most rewarding. I'm not aware of being very Mexican. I mean, I am a Mexican, and I'm very aware of color, but I think it's universal. I don't realize that it's Mexican until people say, oh, well, the fact that it's very colorful, it makes us think of the tropics. I don't do it intentionally. It simply comes out of me because, I suppose, I am Latin, and I love color. Fred Loopster's assembly. I have put a little of my personality into it and uh, uh, my feelings towards it. Uh, and create a piece of sculpture that uh, the agriculture people and the man on the street can relate to. It's, it's the negative space between things that, that I'm working with more so than, than the steel and the objects. Hiroaki Ueda's sculpture was set into place with a certain degree of caution. You don't just drop casually thousands of kilograms of solid rock onto the ground. More than anything, I think that we should uh, forget the word sculpture as opposed to the word of painting, because now sculpture floats, disintegrates, doesn't last, moves, and is painted. As much as painting is now three-dimensional. So I think it's a whole new terminology that's developing because the arts are becoming one. Maybe somebody might in some way relate to the form that's there and might get something from it. Tom Burroughs, Gasworks. If they'd at least stop and not be able to accept it, if it disturbed them in, in some way, then possibly I've got through. Hiroaki Ueda's open stone. Both Eastern and Western sculptors have a lot in common. But there are always differences, of course. Fred Loopster's homage to Will. This type of thing, I can hopefully get the people to spend the time to just become involved with a new object, you know, a new thing. And, and if they do pick it up as um, uh, culture for them in, in, in a sculptural form, which it is, uh, that's great, you know, because they can, maybe that makes them more aware of what's going on in the museums and galleries around town. Helen Escobedo's Signals. I think that from the sort of bronze sculptures in parks, we're moving to, to happenings, which is a sort of revolution of where does the artist belong today. I think he's got to belong somewhere, and I think he's going to belong to things like our natural environment, and I think he's got to belong where he must make things more beautiful. And the things that need being made more beautiful are cities. <laughs> 